Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us Need Software to 213-640-9738. That's 213-640-9738. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. The white supremacists use division as a weapon, dividing our families, our wealth, rewarding traitors, murdering heroes. Yet we survived. We fought for our reparations. Now it's our turn to divide and administer God's power. I am Agent Nuria Sellers, a foundational black American. I promise that nothing will come between us. Buy the sci-fi novel, Nothing Will Come Between Us. Available January 22nd. Pre-order online today at Amazon and Google Play. Spirit of 1811 Publishing.com. Our story, our family. This Black Friday, we are having more than just sales going on. We are giving away free cheese. Buy two, get one free. Buy a hoodie, get one free. Buy a sweatshirt, get one free. Guess what else is free? Shipping! 30 days of Christmas specials start on Black Friday and runs to Christmas Eve. Come see what all the fuss is about at blackeldervoices.com. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Baiter now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. All right. All right, we're here. We are in here, folks. Y'all come on in the room, folks. Everybody come on in the room. I am live right now. I am streaming live for you. Right now, everybody hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button, everybody pile on in the room. We're going to chop it up like we always do. Glad to have everybody tuning in on Tariq Radio Live this wonderful evening. Um, yeah, man, so, hey, look, they got this shadow ban thing going on. They're not sending out the alerts like they need to. I know a lot of people are complaining they did not get the um, they didn't get the alert from from YouTube, but they got it from me tweeting the link and putting the link on Instagram. All right. So look, we're here. We're here. People laughing at the thumbnail that we chose to use. Yeah, we were talking about the divester blues. Oh, we have trolls in here already. That's okay. That is okay. But let me, first of all, shout out to everybody who got the book, Foundational Black American Race Beta, the hottest book out in the game right now, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to everybody who got their book. People are loving the book, ladies and gentlemen. People are loving the book. And you will love it too. You go to Amazon and get your copy now. Very concise book. A lot of good information in this book. You will learn a lot. Yes, indeed. So a lot of stuff we're going to get into on today's broadcast. Somebody's they're talking about the divestor wig. Yes. Um, where do we start? A lot of stuff we got to touch on tonight. A lot of good things we got to touch on even before we start talking about the divestors. Um, 
Well, I, well let, let's just get right into the divester thing. Let, let's get right into it. Now, you know, the divestors, for those who don't know, the divestors are these people who are on Twitter, on social media. Um, there's a whole movement of them with a bunch of anti-black male rhetoric. They have a whole movement where they want to divest from black men. I don't know how they're going to do that. Black men and black women, we are one in the same. We cannot escape each other. We are inter interlinked indefinitely, especially under a system of white supremacy. So we cannot run from each other. Black men and black men, women, we have nowhere to run. There's no sanctuary for black men and black women to run to outside of each other. Where are we going to run to, ladies and gentlemen? Black men, where are you going to run to? I see a lot. Of, and I'm, I get on the Negroes, too. Some of the divest, the divestment Negroes. These, you, got, you got a handful of these Negroes talking about, oh, I got you to get me a Becky and all of that. And that never really works out for them like they think it does. But these bedwinches go hard with this, you know, getting all on TikTok, doing all of this racial showcasing. That is a thing with them. They go overboard. If there's any video of a white man complimenting a sister, I mean, it gets a million likes. And let's be very fair. Let's be very clear. I've talked about this before. Many of these divestors, most of them, and I will say most, the majority of them, they come from these non-FBA backgrounds. A lot of these non-FBA backgrounds here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all, like hold, all hold ethnicities on. or what? All ethnicities. You like curvy or thin? Hold, hold on. If somebody made a joke here. This is Kyle Rittenhouse. And they, this is Kyle Shittenhouse. Let me let me show y'all this clip real quickly. Of the, the idol of the white supremacists. They, they're parading him around like a hero. Let me show this little clip of Kyle Rittenhouse. Somebody said the divestors are creaming right now. Hold on. Listen, they, they've been parading this guy around like a hero. Hold on. All, like all ethnicities or what? All ethnicities. You like curvy or thin? I like thick. Oh, oh damn, okay. Boy. Oh, yeah. oh. City, all like all ethnicities or what? All ethnicities. You like curvy or thin? I like thick. Oh, oh damn, okay. Boy. Oh. Okay, now with with Killer Kyle saying that, do you know there's going to be some bedwinches in Killer Kyle's DMs? Like, hey, Killer Zaddy, they're going to be in Kyle Rittenhouse's. DMs. I want y'all to be very clear. This is how dangerous some of these divestors are. They love these white supremacists. These white supremacist suspects. And by the way, Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah, he. he they, they've been parading shit in house around. Um, they got him back on social media, Instagram. They keep taking his page up, taking it down, going back and forth because the Instagram knows that platforming him and them normalizing this little killer. They know that the pushback is going to hit them because of the Kyle Rittenhouse effect. Now, after Kyle Rittenhouse has done these murders and he had white supremacist society caping for him, that created a lane for all of these school shooters now. There has been a bunch of school shootings and planned school shootings directly associated with that whole Kyle Rittenhouse effect. The effect of Kyle Rittenhouse. All right? The effect of it. This lets the white supremacist suspects know or the these little crazy teens say, hey, well, damn. Nobody's recognizing me. I'm not getting no attention I'm crazy as hell. I got all these guns. Hey, I can get me some clout like Kyle. I can get I can start clout chasing and get me a whole gang of clout just like Kyle. If I just go shoot up my school, if I go pop some people, hey, they're not going to look down on me. I'm going to be a hero like Kyle. I told people before they acquitted this dude, the, the school shooters are going to be doing the Birdman hand rub, the potential school shooters. So a lot of these um, social media outlets, they understand that there's going to be possibly a pushback 
for them giving this guy a lane because more people are going to act out because of the Kyle Rittenhouse effect. And it's going to come back on social media. People are going to eventually say, hey, you are platforming this guy. You are normalizing this guy and you're, you're encouraging this type of behavior. So a lot of the social media companies, they're, they're at a crossroads right now. See? See? They had a, because technically by the law, and the law don't mean shit, law doesn't mean right. Slavery was legal. All right? Let's be very clear. But the white supremacist law, yeah, white supremacy kind of eats itself. That's the good thing about um, how white supremacy is so corrupt. They eat themselves. So... The law said, okay, this guy is, he should be acquitted. So now, Twitter and Instagram and all of these platforms, they don't really have a legal justification to take his page down because legally, he was found not guilty based on the law, even though the law is based on white supremacy. But see, this is, they can't push back too hard on white supremacy because see, the dominant society, they need those privileges. See, this is, a, they're, in a, they're in a conundrum right now. They, they don't know what to do. They've created a monster here, but they can't push back against white supremacy too hard because one day, if they get caught up in a trial, they're going to need some of those, those white privileges, some of that immunity from law. That's part of the selling point to white supremacy. How do you sell white supremacy to the masses? When a small group of white people really get most of the money, see, you got to show these poor white people, hey, you're going to get something out of white supremacy too. What you're going to get is when we go to court or when you go to court, you you're not going to fall down as low as the Negroes, all right? Yeah, you're going to be in a trailer park. Yeah, you're going to be smoking meth, but we're not, at least we're not going to criminalize you. We're not going to do you like the niggas, all right? So even though you're, you're, you, you might be out here messing up, we still got you. We're going to make sure you're good. So when you go to court for something, you know, we'll slide that out. You go to court for rape, we'll slide that out. You go to court for, for meth possession, we'll slide that out. We're not going to give you 20 and 30 years like we do the Negroes. We're not going to do that to you. So that's the, the selling point of white supremacy. This is why black folks, don't let folks in the dominant society run this game on you where they try to play innocent. What privileges? I don't get any benefits or privileges, buddy. I work hard. I don't get any benefits, buddy. Where's my privilege, buddy? I make 10 bucks an hour, dude. And you got a million dollars worth of whiteness. Don't ever let them forget that. They'll try to run that game. Now, listen, dude. My grandpa came over here in 1915, dude. He only had $2 to his name, dude. He came over from Italy, dude. My grandpa had $2 and he worked himself, worked his fingers to the bone. He pulled himself up by his beach straps. That's how he be, was able to take care of me and my, my, my nana and my, my family. No, so if, if my grandpa can do it with no money, how come you can't do it? First of all, your grandpa had a million dollars worth of whiteness when he got here. And there were all types of set-asides and benefits for your grandpa when he got here. That's why he got his ass over here with them $2. That's why he sailed over here in the dangerous ocean and got away from broke as Italy at the time because he knew that million dollars worth of whiteness was going to pull through. He, they heard about it. If you come over here, there's something called white. And you get a bunch of benefits and privileges that black folks work for that you get. Now, in the same time, when your granddad came over here in 1915, remember, that was the height of Jim Crow. Don't ever let them leave that out. That was the height of Jim Crow. Jim Crow, ladies and gentlemen, was an affirmative action program for white people. Don't tell me about your damn grandpa who came over in 1915. Yeah, he came up because 1915 was the height of Jim Crow. That was affirmative action for white people. They were deliberately sabotaging and openly sabotaging black people in their businesses and their towns. In 1915 or whenever your granddad came over, they were burning down black cities. 
Anytime we got any economic prosperity, the white supremacists would burn the towns down. We think just Tulsa. It was many more than Tulsa. I should have showed my book. I got a whole book talking about all of the racial cleansings and the race riots that they had against black people, where every time we get an economic stronghold somewhere, we get economically stable. The white supremacists would go in, burn the cities down, shoot the people up, lynch people and run everybody out of town, flood the whole town with water. There's a lot of towns in America that were black that's underwater right now. That's another thing they would do. And we got to really get into that, how they would flood black towns, just put them underwater. Remember, they were trying to do that. They kind of did that to a certain degree with New Orleans, with Katrina. You saw how fast they did that? They put New Orleans underwater and, and really it targeted the black area. You see how fast they did that? Literally overnight, they put the black part of New Orleans underwater and black people were fucked up in the game. They've been doing that, man. They've been putting black folks underwater, literally. That's a part of the game that's never talked about. But Lake Lanier, exactly. The, the haunted lake, Lake Lanier. So yeah, your granddad came over with $2, but that million dollars of whiteness kicked in and your granddad's communities were not burned down. None of those communities were burned down. They were not burning down um, Irish communities. They weren't burning down Italian communities. They weren't burning down Hispanic communities. They were not burning down Asian communities because they didn't have a reason to sabotage you because if they wanted to sabotage you, they would have just not let you over. They could have just said, hey, you just can't come over here. They brought you over to undermine us economically. You understand? They brought you over to undermine us economically and all these people came over eating off our tax dollars. Remember, they came over get, not only getting the money from our free labor after slavery, we were black, black people, we've always been taxpayers, but we never have those tax dollars benefit us. So you're eating off our tax dollars that we can't even benefit off of and we're oppressed the most. Don't tell me about your damn granddad in 1915. There's a lot you're leaving out. You're leaving out a lot of stuff. You have those home loans that all you had to do is be white and you can get, and that created the white middle class. Black people could not get those home loans. That's why black people were systematically pushed into impoverished situations. They were not doing that with other groups. They were not systematically in how and in, in, impoverishing you. They were not making you systematically impoverished. They were not doing it to your group. And not only were they sabotaging us during the Jim Crow era, family, they still do it now. They still sabotage black people and black businesses to this very day. To this very day, if you talk to black business owners, you'll see how black business owners are constantly sabotaged. To this very day. And I'm, I'm one of the people who can attest to it. Right now, we're still trying to get the museum, ladies and gentlemen. And this is a great example. There's black folks who went down to buy the Crenshaw Mall. They would not let the black people buy the Crenshaw Mall. They undermined the black people trying to buy the Crenshaw Mall. We tried to buy a few pieces of property out there on Crenshaw. Cash in hand. We went in there with cash in hand. I have the money to get the properties down there. They were like, uh, they hemmed and hauled and drug ass. They were dragging ass. One building we were going to get on Crenshaw. We had money cash in hand. We went and did a walkthrough. It was a former bank. It was going to be where the, right across the street where that land we were going to get. And then they put that in escrow. Somebody scooped that up. But right across the street, there was a bank. Would, would have been perfect. Right in Lamert Park. They gave us a price. They, we did a walkthrough. I got that. I got it. We showed them proof of funds. We showed them the bank accounts. We had that. What, what you want, we got it. Where do we sign? Boy, they drug ass, drug ass, would not let us get it. From what I understand, my real estate guy did a lot of research. They're going to, and I said this before, they're going to sell that to somebody making a damn weed dispensary. And they gave it to them for less money than we were giving them. We're trying to get a museum. We told them we got the money and not only do we have the money, this museum is going to be culturally relevant to this neighborhood. They're going to build a damn weed dispensary there. And I think it's some white people who own it. 
we got to go through this type of shit. You understand what I'm saying? So don't let nobody run this game on us. Don't let nobody run that bootstrap game like they're just working so hard and we're not. They're, they're not sabotaged. All right. And I, I just want black folks to under, understand this part of the game. Somebody said YouTube is not putting up online alerts. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, yeah I, I, I guarantee that dispensary is not black owned. I'm telling y'all because we already, my, my real estate guy found out. That's going to be a weed dispensary down there. A damn weed dispensary. Yeah. But listen, let me go back to the topic. We're talking about how black men and black women, we are intertwined with each other. We are one, ladies and gentlemen. One thing that we are not going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to let the white supremacists play the diversionary game with us. They did that in the 60s, and that had kind of a negative effect going into the 70s and 80s, and it really culminated heavily in the 90s with that Oprah thing. And we talked about that in the bug breaking movie. But listen, they want to keep black men and black women divided. When we stick together, when we fight together, we start making waves, we start making moves. When we work and operate as a black family, that's a power move. When we operate as a black family. I want y'all to understand a lot of these divestors that we see online, a lot of these women on TikTok, a lot of these women on social media spreading this anti-black male hate. Oh, we got to divest and go get a zaddy. Oh, we got to get a zaddy, 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 zaddy. Understand that many of these people are paid ops. We better understand how these folks, the white supremacists, how they're very cunning with the way they get black people. And look, this is why we got to be about economics, because when you are poor or you have a lot of poor people within your group, it's easy for them to be paid off to do some sabotaging. I want you all to understand how devious these white supremacists are. They have think tanks where they go get people and they pay them to get online to sow dissension. They get people to go online to create this black male, female war. These people are not doing it just to be doing it. Let's be very clear. Some of them are, but a lot of these people are put out here to do that. Yeah, most of the sisters ain't no divestors and all that, but understand, a lot of these people are paid to, to spew this nonsense and to make it sound like more of a bigger movement than it is, and it's not really a big movement. But they get out here to sow this dissension. And then what happens is that these political parties try to come through on the back end and capitalize off of it. So they get out here and they get these bedwinch mammies talking about, hey, we got to divest, leave these black men alone. It's all about us. Us black women got to stick together and get us a zaddy. And then they put out these shows, the Olivia Popes and all that. And they start th dangling that carrot at sisters. And then when you look at TV commercials, and when you look at um, commercial and corporate ads, notice a lot of these situations, they got black women with white men. You, you see, this is coming from the top, guys. This is coming from the top. Almost every commercial you see, or every ad you see, it damn near has a black woman with a white man. You know? Hold on. Even movies with kids. Hold on one second. Even movies with movies with kids, like my, my kids love the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. My kids love the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Do y'all have if y'all have kids, you guys have seen the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. And they got Sonic the Hedgehog 2 coming out. All right. But if you've seen Sonic the Hedgehog, you'll notice this. You see? They starting it off young. So they get these sisters in these movies with these white men now. 
And yeah, she's the love interest. They get these sisters in these movies with these white men. This is very common now. This is a common thing right now. You look at commercials. It's these white, white men with these black women. And they got the mixed kids. And they're playing on the insecurities of a lot of mammies and bedwinches. They're playing on the insecurities because a lot of these mammies and bedwinches, they have insecurities about how they look. And deep down, they want to have a, especially those foreign ones, by the way, especially the foreign ones. But a lot of them, boy, they don't want to have a, a, a child that looks like them. They want to have, you know, they want to brighten them kids up. So they want to have mixed kids. So the white supremacists play on that. So... They go out of their way to make sure that the, the children in these commercials are always biracial looking. You think? Hold on. They go out of their way. I want y'all to notice, if y'all look at these commercials, you'll see that the children are always biracial looking. And there's a whole book genre of these, there's a whole genre of these books where there's black women with white men. There's a whole genre, BWWM BW, books. Let me show y'all this. Hold on one second. Let me, I'm, I'm pulling this stuff up while I'm talking, but let me show y'all some of this stuff. Let me show y'all some of these books, ladies and gentlemen. And I've talked about this before. Back in the Mac Lessons days, I used to break this stuff down all the time. But there's a whole genre of these books. Okay, now I want y'all to look at the thing. Family, look at this. There's a whole genre. Um, it's on Amazon. These BWWM books, Black Woman, White Men books. Now look at this. This is all on Amazon. There's a whole genre catering to that, those, those bed wenches and divesters and their insecurities. Look at these books here. The Search for Her Lost Daughter. Got the mixed looking daughter. The Model and the Italian Billionaire's Love. So these fantasy books about fat bed wenches who are big plus size models getting with white men. His Fleeing Single Mom. Look at these books. An unexpected surrogate for the billionaire. Norwegian Prince's Baby. Look at the themes of these books, guys. It's always about them having a, a mixed baby. We got a, some, some white black woman Asian man. His big reunited love. Over 50 older man, younger woman. Plus size loving billionaire. So this this is some science fiction fantasy that they got going on. This is some science fiction. Look at look at it. These bunny ruckuses, plus size ma interracial marriage, family. This is how desperate these bedwinches and mammies are. This is a whole genre, ladies and gentlemen. Man. Uh, it's, it's, it's book after book. It's just a whole thing. You, you, <laughs> it's some sad, sick stuff. Love fumbles. Uh, um, uh, it's, it's all over the place. I'm just looking at some of these titles. Uh, Lupo's Twins. Right? They got a white man in, with a black woman and they got twins. So they got to have the mixed babies. And some of these same women, let me tell you something. These same women, now look at the, the book covers with the, the these black women... They got them with these white male models. It's, it's, it's all fantasy. None of it is real. This is all fantasy. Uh, here's another one. Surprise quadruplets for the billionaire. So th this is clearly some Nigerian woman or somebody. I don't know. This sounds like somebody from, from somewhere else. Um, his big caring match. So you got these big fat broads on here with these model-esque white men. The Fireman Special Hose. That's the name of a book. Family, this is the silliest shit I've ever seen in my life. 
But let me show you something. Now, this is what these same women, they wrote this book right here. They, this is what they wrote. Hold on. This is these same women wrote a book like this. Fat white women and the black men who love them. All right. So these women write these kind of books. It's some deep stuff, family. It's heavy. But see, they play on that fantasy. A lot of these women got these insecurities, these fantasies about getting with a white, a white Hispanic or an Asian male so that they can have these mixed babies. And these divestors, boy, they have a lot of disdain for black males because, see, they mad because when they get a black male, they're going to have some black kids. And that's what they really have disdain for. They have disdain for their black kids. They don't want to keep reproducing themselves. So a lot of the media plays on that deep-rooted divestor insecurity. That's why if you look at a lot of shows, for example, a lot of the urban shows, power, a lot of the power episodes, you notice that they got a they always have a dark skinned black woman in Raisin Cane, and they had that dark skinned black woman laying up with all of these real light or Latino or white looking men. They made it a point to have this woman laying up with all of these white looking men. You understand? Even on the new power, listen, listen, even on the new power, and it was something that kind of threw me off, the, the Mary J. Blige character. Do y'all notice on the new power, the Mary J. Blige character, she's a drug dealer, very cold-hearted drug queen pen. They always got her booed up with a Hispanic dude. You notice that? Her husband is in jail. He's a Hispanic drug lord who's the father of her kids, but all the kids look black. You, you dig? It, that makes no sense. But then Mary J's character was having an affair with a Hispanic cop. So now in the latest episodes, they got another Hispanic drug kingpin who's acting like he's all falling in love with her and he misses her. He knew her back in the day. And that was kind of throwing me off because... In, in the yeah in the power episodes the the more recent ones I got to see tonight I haven't seen today's episode I'm gonna watch that but they had one guy and it was t it wasn't believable they had this Hispanic kingpin he was like oh man um, I, what's Mary J's character in the show he was like yeah I had to find you I I miss you I want to bill with you again and whoop de whoop and that, that was just taking me all out for one reason it was taking me out because the chemistry was very, very bad. The chemistry between her and these Hispanic men are this horrible. There's no real chemistry. Also, why would any dude, who's especially a drug dealer making all this money, be all head over heels for a cold-hearted, older drug queen pen? <laughs> Why would you be all head over heels for her? Mary J's, Monet is right. Yeah, Monet. To hate her. Yeah, Monet, that's her character. Now, Monet, there's absolutely nothing appealing about her character that would make somebody want to fall in love with her. Yeah, she is. there's no chemistry. Her character is cold. She's a cold-hearted, emotionless drug queenpin. There's nothing about her. What, what's going to make a dude go head over heels for her ass? Yeah, don't be matching up. I'm like, eh, this ain't no real chemistry here. I, I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't believe it. I'm like, if I'm a drug dealer, if I'm a drug, yeah, I'm thinking, okay, in terms of hustlers, if I'm a drug dealer, yeah, I don't want no, I got a lot of money. If I'm out here trapping, I got a lot of money. Yeah, let's keep it a buck. I'm looking at this. I'm like, this ain't realistic. This ain't realistic at all. Wait, Tanya Sims said, aren't my kids mixed? How the fuck, how do my kids mix with two black parents, sweetie? No, my kids have two black parents. None of my children are mixed. None of them. I have four children, one on the way. I'm going to have five kids in a few months. None of them are mixed. 
Every one of my children are black and beautiful. But thank you, Tanya. Now, uh, what's your name? Toya? Hold on, what's her name? Tanya Sims? Okay. Now, you have a cartoon as your profile picture. And usually, big bone broads do that. Now, you sound big boned. You sound very big boned. And you sound upset that we probably called you out and you're projecting. Yeah? No, she's not going to call up. And I should open the phone lines up. Yeah? But, nigga, my wife is black. You understand? In the Caribbean, where y'all from, all of that mixed shit, that has something, that has stock there. See, y'all come from these little old cultures where y'all have little mixed communities, just like in South Africa. Y'all come from these little Caribbean and African nations where there's little mixed communities. That's why I can tell y'all ain't from here. Well, that person's mixed. That don't mean shit. That means they're black over here, over in South Africa, where you're from, or wherever you're from, there's mixed communities where that means something. The mixed people are the white people in your community. Yeah? So yeah, don't come, don't project your your tether shit over here. Don't start projecting your tetherness over here. As foundational black Americans, black is black. There is no mixed communities over here. Now, ma'am, I know you're big boned, and I know you want you a zaddy, but don't shoot the messenger. Don't try to bring my wife into it, my black and beautiful wife and my black and beautiful kids. Don't try to bring them into your, your projection. Oh, wait a minute. You talking about me. I got a baby by a Mexican? <laughs> yeah, you just say you got a baby by a Mexican and keep it pushing. All right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. The baby likes collard greens and pinto beans. There's nothing wrong with that, but don't project. Don't project, ma'am. Don't call. Don't come up here projecting on us. And ma'am, I recommend this book to you. All right? The Big Caring Match. That's your ass on the cover. <laughs> that is you on the cover projecting, Tanya. You projecting about having a zaddy. <laughs> don't you project your bullshit onto me, dear. Okay. We are black over here. We are black over here. You understand? Now you probably got a poor white man that comes fuck up on you. He he comes tap you tap that big ass every now and then. You got a, a poor white man you dig, who's smashing every blue moon and leaving your house smelling like wet dog. And you got to explain that with your little nursing uniform on. I, I get it. But don't project over here. We're all black over here. Don't try to justify your shit by talking about what we got going on. You got you a white man over there who's milking you for meth money. Y'all be going over there. See, there's a big misconception that only the brothers, when they go white, when they get white broads, the brothers be getting the sloppy white women and all that. But then the sisters, they be getting all of these Fabio. No, 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 no. Stop it. A lot of y'all be getting these dirty funky dog smelling meth heads you dig in hopes of getting you a little mixed baby let's keep it a buck a lot of y'all be out here trying to get the y'all sleep with anything white dirty funky old you're fucking with some old george burns looking white man he can't even get it up and you still trying to squeeze a baby out of zaddy y'all out there giving that pussy up to Bob at the job. Bob at the job. Bob in accounting. The little goofy white man that you done bent your ass over in the parking lot and let Bob get it in after the Christmas party. You know, y'all just had a Christmas party and Bob was hitting it from the bike. You hopefully, you, you want to get knocked up by Bob. <laughs> so you can have your little Keisha Cole running around this motherfucker. So don't get mad at me for for speaking what it is. And don't get mad. See, people, when you start telling the truth, people start trying to project. What about your fight? What about your community and family? No, 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 no. We still black, my lady. It's all black over here. You don't get mad because you let Bob hit it from the bike. Yeah. 
Bob at the job. Bob then gave you a compliment. Hey, look. Hey, LaQuisha. I was watching some reruns of Your MTV Raps. Oh, for real? Okay, Bob. Bob, you giving me MC Search? You say all that hood rat shit y'all talking. Okay, Bob, you giving me, it's giving vanilla ice. Okay. Bob give you a compliment and then your ass is doing the most. Bob gives you one little punk ass compliment. And now you all extra with it. Okay, Bob. Okay, it's giving me Post Malone. Look in your eyes. All right. Is that you out there, Tanya? With Bob at the job, Big Bone Tanya? <laughs> uh, all it, that's all it takes. It, it, Bob just got to do one little thing. Bob got to do one little thing, and then you, you bended it over for Bob. Yeah. <laughs> that's all Bob got to do. Bob got to bring some cinnamon rolls to work, and all of a sudden, he got your ass. He, he got your ass with a plate of cinnamon rolls. That's Bob at the job. And you got knocked out. That's why y'all y'all see these big hood rats out here with these mixed babies. Like, who the who the fuck her? Let me tell you something. When you see these hood rats, let's keep it above. Hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button. When you see these hood rats with like a mixed baby, because you see a lot of them. You're like, where the fuck where did you get this mixed baby from? Let's keep it above. When you see these hood rats, especially these booger bears. When you see a big booger bear hood rat with a mixed baby, you're like, who the fuck her? Because I know, I, I can understand niggas not fucking her. I get that, but what non brother fucked her? You know, like, where did he get this big, big old hood rat up here looking like a burnt up Lizzo with a little bitty ass <laughs> Hispanic baby <laughs> named Dontrarius Gonzalez and shit? Like, where did, where did Dontrarius Gonzalez come from? Where the fuck is his dad? So either little Dontrarius, he's, he's going to have a Hispanic last name because he's going to fuck the Mexican. That's where they, them hood rats, especially out here on the West Coast, they're good for fucking Mexicans. They be fucking Mexicans left and right. They got a whole a Rolodex of Mexicans that they haven't fucked up on them. All right. That's why so many black folks out here, you see a lot of black people in L.A. with Hispanic last names. Either that, they didn't fuck the Mexicans, or they fuck Bob at the job. They didn't fuck some white man at the job, some broke-ass white man, probably some little bullshit-ass supervisor, either Jose or Bob at the job. <laughs> and Bob at the job don't claim her ass. He act like he don't know her. But Bob at the job don't claim shit. But that's where they get these babies from. Well, now Bob at the job, you know, she might hook up with Bob at the job every blue moon. You know, but Bob at the job don't claim her ass. <laughs> and, but yeah, let's keep it above. See, the divestment game is real. The divestment game is hella real. Yeah. And you know where we live, there's a lot of Hispanics out here. Shout out to them. Shout out to the Hispanics. There are, there are a lot of Hispanics out here. You know, and for the hood rats, that's the closest thing they're going to get to white. That's, that's the closest thing. That's the closest thing they're going to get to white. But there's a lot of Hispanics out here. Shout out to the Hispanics. No disrespect to anybody. Shout out to the Hispanics. I'm cool with some Hispanics. You know, we live around a lot of Hispanics where we, where we live. You know, when we, I take my kids to the park, and there's always white and Hispanic kids at the park. At one time, shit, I, I, we went somewhere. We went to a play place, a big play place. And these Hispanic kids were having a big birthday party. And I'm looking for my son, Mateo. And my, my son, Mateo, is very bold. My son, if he sees a party and some other kids, he's in. He ain't about to ask permission to nothing. 
I'm looking for Mateo. Mateo is at the table with the damn Hispanic kids. Like he was invited. I'm looking for Mateo and he's all taking pictures with their ass. I, I think I showed that on, on Twitter, on, on, on social media. I'm looking for Mateo and I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Where's Mateo? His ass was at the birthday party table <laughs> taking pictures with the fucking family. I'm like, man, get your ass over here. Bold as hell. This nigga, man, my boy, sitting at the table. I'm looking, I'm getting worried. Where the fuck is Mateo at? He's sitting at the table next to the birthday board singing. Happy birthday to Hector. Happy birthday. Singing. No, you don't know him. You don't know him, Mateo. Come on. He was singing happy birthday to Hector. Get your ass over here. Why, Daddy? That's, that's my hombre. Get, you don't know Spanish. Get your ass over here. The fuck you doing? <laughs> some happy birthday to Hector. The fuck over here and stop embarrassing me. Man. My kids are very bold. Very, very bold. Yeah. Man, man, man. But, but let's go back to what I'm saying. We're talking about the divestment game here. We're talking about the divestment game. And the, and the divestment game is getting very dangerous at this point. Because per capita, as we see on a weekly basis almost, we see sisters getting with these zaddies and something happens to them. Almost every week. These sisters are getting with these zaddies and we're seeing deadly consequences of sisters with these zaddies. Where's this case right here? This woman right here, this woman down in Florida, she got her a zaddy. This situation right here, this man, this woman right here was divesting boyfriend of Kathleen Moore charged with second degree murder. He killed her. After discovering an article of clothing containing the missing woman's body, her blood, in a landfill. So he killed her and buried her in a landfill. Now look at this man. Look at him. Family, this man looks every bit of like the alt-right. This man looks like one of the damn proud boys. Come on. Is this, this what y'all doing? You walk right into this. This dude looks just like one of the proud boys. All right. So we see this almost every week. Y'all, we can't play this game, sisters. We can't play this game. That man looks like the Proud Boys. He looks like every other white supremacist that we see out here. Yeah. This guy, let me let me look at some more pictures of this guy. Hold on. I'm, I'm looking at pictures. Hold on. I'm, I'm going through different articles. So this is her, you know, the, the divestors, they always got that divestment look. This is the typical divestment look. Slim, dark, this is him, got this alt-right looking dude with these tattoos. I would like to see some of his other tattoos. I would like to see some of his other tattoos. Come on, sisters. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, look, dark pass. This is guy, his, Colin, Colin Knapp. Knapp's arrest for murder on Monday is not his first run-in with the law. He has an extensive rap sheet that includes dozens of arrests, including for domestic battery, possession of cocaine and meth, and reckless driving. Um, 2010, he was booked on felony count of aggregate, aggravated battery. Domestic battery, oh man. Domestic, just tons and tons of domestic battery charges. Having oxycodone, cocaine, other paraphernalia. Again, they get these druggy, meth head, white supremacists. Man. Is that what y'all divesting to, sisters? Is that what y'all getting? Come on now. There's some bed winches. Look over that and like, oh shit, he, Zaddy, that he's, that's a challenge. Zaddy is dangerous. I likes that. Come on, y'all. 
But listen, who's texting me? A lot of people are texting me. But listen, we got to be on top of our game here, ladies and gentlemen, and not go for these divestors trying to break up black men and women trying to create a riff. Because, see, I'm telling you that a lot of these divestors are put out there to create a riff, and then those on top in the political sector, they try to capitalize off of that. Like right now, down there in Georgia, this is a story that just came out. See, this is another black man, black woman divide. New program calls for hundreds of, hundreds of black women in Georgia to get $850 in guaranteed monthly income. So they want to have some kind of set-aside payment just for black women only. It's called In Her Hands. It calls up for 650 black women to get the money with no conditions for two years. Family, this is what they did in the 60s. Let's, let's not go for this. Well, okay, well, we, we're, we're attacking black men and black women, but we'll just help black women. You see, sisters, don't fall for that bait. That's just the way for you to get away from your protection barrier, which is black men. Black men, our job is to protect sisters. They're trying to tell you on a subconscious level. They're trying to telegraph the message. Listen, you can't depend on these black men. White daddy is going to take care of you. Don't worry about them. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Black woman power, black girl power. Sisters, y'all can't go for that. Y'all can't play that game. And look, we have to, we do have to protect. We have to start creating economic opportunities and and get ourselves in economic situations where we can take care of our families. We have to be in positions where we can take care of our people and we don't get in those positions without understanding how the white supremacists will sabotage us. Let's be clear. That's why I was talking earlier. When we try to get an economic stronghold, we get sabotaged by the white supremacists. See, we got to we got to fix that. We have to Take that into consideration whenever we try to get something going on. We have to always understand what are we going to do when the white supremacists try to sabotage what we do. See, we got to have all of our ducks in line. You dig? We got to have everything popping. When they try to do this, we know how to play past that. We have to know how to play past that, ladies and gentlemen. And we have to understand now that there are situations where there's some niggas out here, some brothers out here, that's on some killer simp shit too. Not to the degree as these zaddies. Per capita, based on percentages, percentage-wise, ladies, you're more, if you get with one of these zaddies, the odds of you ending up missing is very high. Because there's only a small number of, of sisters dating these zaddies. But every other week, or not even every other week, every week we see these zaddies killing sisters. So the percentage of them harming you is higher. Now, yes, there are a lot of brothers who do sucker shit, and there's a lot of brothers who harm sisters. I'm going to get on that in a second. Yes, they are. They don't get no points. But percentage-wise, the likelihood of you ending up missing when you get one of these zaddies... It's very, very high. You understand? Now listen. Listen. There was a situation out there in Baltimore, something very sad. And I want to play this video, and this video is kind of sad. It's this Negro, this killer simp, this Negro named Jay Black or something like that. He calmly talked about how he killed his ex and how he's going to kill his ex-wife and this is very disturbing. I almost don't want to play it, but I just want to show y'all something. I just want to show y'all these how these killer simps get down. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me show this. Hold on. Where is it? Hold on. Y'all bear with me one second. Let me play this for you guys. Hold on one second. Come on, where is it? Here it is. Okay, now look look at this. This is very disturbing. All right, hold on. Hold on. Yes, but um, I gotta make it quick. For everybody out there that supported me and really knows what's going on, thank you all. Um, I've been going through a custody battle. I've been going through um, having my ex-wife 
say I molested my children and all kinds of craziness. Been fighting for custody for three years. So, uh, you know, shit has been real crazy. What's up, Oliver? You know about this. Um, going through it with my ex-wife, blah, blah, blah. So, meet, you know, and start dating somebody new. And she got pregnant. And, um, you know, we got in the fight. First thing she does is threatening that she's going to do the same thing. You know, we're going to see your kids, blah, blah, blah. It's the holidays, man. I don't have no family, nothing. Anyway, I just did something crazy, man. I just shot my ex-girlfriend in the head, yo. Um, felt like a dream. Like, I never thought I would be that guy. Um, I can't go to prison, so the person that really started my depression and all of this is my ex-wife. So she next, and then I'm going to do myself too, but I just wanted to say this to people. Don't play with people's emotions, man. Don't lie on these men. Oh, here's my ex-wife right here. Okay. All right. Not cool. And my, my Baltimore people, y'all know what's going on with this situation because this is a story out here. Um, this killer simp killed his wife, killed his ex, yeah, not cool at all. Some people are saying that this guy's non-FBA. I can, I can see that. I can feel that. You dig? Yeah. And from what I understand, the children were in the car when this dude did this. You dig? This is a killer sim. And. He's talking about his depression and all of this stuff. Now, listen, this guy was in the medical field. This guy was in the medical field. Let me show y'all some. This is video of this guy. There's other video of this guy teaching people about nursing machines. This guy, let me show y'all something. Look at this. This is the same guy right here. This is Jay, like a, a couple of years ago. Hold on. So he's teaching people about some kind of nursing machines or something and and hold on this is him this is him right here Okay this is him a couple of years ago Okay so this guy <laughs> okay, I want y'all to see something right here. I think he's working for Johnson and Johnson. He was doing something with for Johnson and Johnson. Okay. Okay, so this guy was doing some stuff in the medical field. So yeah, y'all know in the medical field, especially out there on the East Coast, there's a lot of these non-FBAs. All right. So a lot of these non-FBAs. In the medical field out here. Somebody said it don't matter. Yes, it does matter. Yes, it does matter. No, 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 no. Somebody said, oh, it don't matter if he's not. No, it does matter. Oh, it does matter. Yeah, it does matter. You, you dig? Yeah, that matters. You know, because when cats do stuff like that, we don't want them. We don't want them to be put on us. Don't put them on us now. Yeah, I, I smell some oxtails there. Yeah, but yeah, this dude worked for Johnson and Johnson. So what's going on with? Uh, I'm looking at all of this stuff. I'm looking at all of it. You never know. You never know what's going on with some people. We got a lot of folks in the room. Listen. Did this dude get an injection or something? Yeah, he works for the medical industry, particularly Johnson & Johnson. Did this? Did they inject this nigga with something? For him to just calmly flip off like that? You did? This dude worked in the medical industry, dude. And this dude, all of a sudden, he's mentally fucked up and he does this? You understand? Somebody said he's Caribbean. Yeah. He's a. So, yeah, what's going on with that? 
Yeah, that type of killer simp thing. Yeah, FBA dudes, we don't simp. We got some simps. We don't be simping like that. Come on, come on. Let's keep it a buck. Let me show you something. Notice whenever y'all see some dudes killing their wife or their girlfriend, it's usually some non-FBA niggas doing that. You, you see a lot of that down in Florida. You see a lot of these non-FBA niggas, you done bludgeoned your wife or your, your girlfriend, and these no-game-having niggas. A lot of these niggas with no mouthpiece, no game. A lot of that shit, them Florida niggas who ain't FBA be doing that. Them killer simps. Them niggas who ain't from here who got them non-FBA backgrounds. Let's keep it a buck. That dude don't sound FBA. And I'm making a point to say that because, look, we got to understand because I don't, a lot of stuff gets thrown on us. Like, uh, all right now. Yeah, don't throw that nigga on us. Because foundational black America, we charge shit to the game. Ooh, ooh, I, got a, I got another broad. I ain't, about to go, I ain't about to start killing nobody over no damn broad. You know, we, we ain't about to do all that. FBA dudes don't run. We ain't tripping like that on no damn. Yeah, we got some simps, but yeah, we, we charge that to the game. We'll we get something else. You dig? Yeah, they were keeping the kids away and all of that stuff. And, you yeah, know. With a nigga to snap like that. But I, I want to know what else was going on with that dude. Did this dude have any kind of medical thing going on? I, I, I want to know. This dude just happened to work for a medical company. He was also teaching medical procedures. And he's working for Johnson & Johnson. So, damn, what did they do? And he's out there in Baltimore? And let me tell you something. A lot of those medical experiments happen in Baltimore. Um, John Hopkins and all of that. Man, do y'all know all of the medical exper experiments that have happened in Baltimore? Baltimore is a hotbed for all types of Frankenstein-ass science um, testing on black folks. They're big on that out there in Baltimore. Do you, you know what I'm saying? My Baltimore people should know what I'm talking about. They're big on all of that stuff out there in Baltimore. Yeah? There's a lot of stuff that goes on with the, the medical industry. Man, y'all better look up the history of John Hopkins, man. So much stuff comes out of John Hopkins. Dude, my, where's my, my book over here? My good brother... Wesley Muhammad, boy, he's breaking, he was breaking down a lot of stuff like that. You see how thick this book is. He was talking about, this is called The Pot Plot, but it talks about so much more deeper stuff. Boy, this book is like, this is an 800-page book. My brother was talking a lot about John Hopkins and all of the experiments that comes out of there. Man, they're infamous for that. So, you know, I, we got to take a lot of stuff in consideration. Yeah. We have to take a lot of things in consideration. Yeah, this dude who's a certified nurse, so you know they had to give him something. Yeah, this guy's a not only is he a certified nurse, he's teaching other people nursing. So how many of those things did this dude get? For him to calmly flip out like that. Yeah? I don't put nothing past these folks in the dominant society. I don't put nothing past them. You then? Nothing past them at all. Speaking of that, speaking of nothing past, did y'all see, hold on, where's this thing? Where Iran, hold on, let me show y'all something. Iran, the country of Iran, they said that they're putting sanctions on the United States. They're, they're thinking about putting sanctions on the United States. Where is this article? Right here. And I want y'all to understand why they're doing it. Okay, this is an article that came out. Iran threatened sanctions against U.S. over treatment of black Americans. An Iranian judicial official said that the Islamic Republic is concerned about police brutality against black people in the United States, citing the murder of George Floyd. So now people, we got to understand when people are being strategic, 
all right? We got to understand when people are being strategic or when they're being genuine allies. Now, this is what this is what I call a strategic clapback. And I'm, I'm, they did this because the U.S. tried to put some sanctions recently on Iran. The U.S. was trying to say, hey, we're going to put sanctions on you because of human rights violations. So this is basically a strategic clapback. They're saying, hey, if you're going to do that, we're going to put sanctions on you based on how you're treating the black people over there. You see? So that's just a, that's a strategic clapback. Let's understand, and we can use that. We'll, we'll, we can take it, but use it for what it is. Yeah, it's very strategic. So when people do these strategic clapbacks, we can use it for what it is, and we can get political mileage out of it, but don't sit up and think that we got some like a whole bunch of allies. You understand? When they're just being strategic with their clapback. That's all it is. So, you know, they're going to use it to their advantage. We have to use it to our advantage. It's like, oh, yeah, we're the political football. That's all it is. They're playing political football. We have to use things like this to our adva advantage as well. We have to blow stories like this up to say, hey, look, the world is calling out your racism. See, we got to play it like that. You see, we got to play it. We got to be strategic about the way we put folks on front street, too. We got to be very strategic about stuff. I ain't mad at it, but I just understand where it's coming from. All right. Just understand where that is coming from. Yeah. Speaking of foreigners, um, and, and as we know, right now, there's a there's a global crime wave. You know, they, they're talking about the crime wave in Los Angeles is not really a crime wave. I think, again, the police are orchestrating a lot of the stuff that we're seeing. I'm thinking the cops are orchestrating a lot of it so they can get refunded. The cops out here are rotten and dirty to the core and they're trying to get refunded. But it, it seems like there's a, a, an uptick on crime because, again, we just had everything shut down because of COVID. Things are just now opening up and now there's more people who don't have jobs, more people who don't have homes. So now when you have so many people who have been, you know, this the COVID thing has deprived them, of course there's going to be an uptick and this is not just here. See, they try to parade a bunch of black folks around on TV to make it seem like, oh, look at their culture. No, there's an uptick in crime around the globe to a certain degree. Down there in Cancun, let me show y'all this. In Cancun, you had some of the, the goons in Cancun, some of them Hispanic gangs, they're running up shooting at resorts up there. All right? Gunmen on jet skis open fire at Cancun Resort as shootings in region surge. So now, as you see here, they got armed guards at the resorts down there. And some of those resorts in Mexico are popping right now. So yeah, they got the armed guards out there at the resort. Now, what are they doing this for? Now, why are people shooting at the resorts? See, this is a way for some of the goons out there to shake the resorts down. This is the resorts getting shaken down. The goons are basically like, look, our businesses are hurting right now. We need we need some extra paper. Now listen, break us off some of that resort money. Y'all making a lot of money out here. Let us hold something and we won't shoot your resort up. That's basically what, this is a shakedown. Because there's no reason. What other reason would they have to shoot up a resort? This is them shaking down the, the, the resorts. This is the goons shaking the resorts down. Now listen, you're going to have to give us a, a little monthly bag. Give us about a million dollars a month. We see you making a lot of money. Yes, protection money. That's all it is. Listen, give us a million dollars a month. We won't shoot your resort up. We ain't going to mess your business up. They understand shooting up resorts, that's going to be bad for business. They're going to lose money. You understand? So listen... Let me hold a bag. We won't shoot your joint up. Yeah? Yeah, the streets got to eat. That's all it is. Look, the streets got to eat. We see all these people, y'all, the resorts, 
because you go to Mexico. We were just down in Mexico not too long ago. This is extortion. That's all it is. You go down to Mexico. These resorts are popping. Lavish. The resorts are beautiful and popping. But all around is poverty and degradation. It's, it's raggedy around the resorts. Everything around the resorts is raggedy. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a shakedown. Who is John? Who, who is John? Okay, we've got a lot of folks trolling in the room. Shout out to the trolls. Shout out to the trolls in the room. And by the way, trolls, you guys can go to Amazon and get the book, Foundational Black American Race Beta. Very good book. Many of you white supremacist trolls will really like the book. I think you will enjoy it because it speaks a lot of truth about your culture. I think that you will really, really enjoy the book. Very good book about your culture. Um, where are my Houston people? See, we got to understand how the game is played out here. I want y'all to see this story coming out of Houston where somebody at the Hertz rental car place in Houston, it looks like there's some white supremacist sitting up here calling the police on black people who rent cars falsely claiming that the cars are stolen so that black people can get pulled over with gun drawn, guns drawn on them. I want y'all to look at this story. This is happening in Houston. Look at this. Customers who rent cars for work or even family trips, and then they get pulled over at gunpoint accused of driving a stolen car. It really sounds too unbelievable to be true, but our investigates team exposed the problem and now we're seeing action. Investigator Joel Eisenbaum has the update. Customers right here in Houston tell us they rented cars from Hertz, the car is reported stolen, and the customer is suddenly facing officers at gunpoint or warrants for their arrests. It's pretty crazy stuff. And now the Harris County attorney is getting involved. KPRC2 Investigates has uncovered a troubling problem. Harris County Attorney's Office saw KPRC2 Investigates' story and reviewed the documents we posted online. In a statement, the County Attorney's Office wrote, the Harris County Attorney's Office is now exploring options on how to proceed with these cases. So far, we have highlighted four cases connected to Houston, including that of Xander's Pace, who got his arrest warrant thrown out after we inquired. And since our last report, Report. We've heard of at least four more cases of folks in Houston facing criminal charges. We're going to post those findings on our website for you. Okay. Boy, that's some cold shit right there. That's cold, man. That is cold as hell. Now, that's somebody up at Hertz, some white supremacist, and I, I rock with Hertz, but I don't know if I'm going to rock with Hertz after this. I don't know if I'm because I, I I'm a gold member at Hertz, but I don't, that's some dirty shit. You got some suspected white supremacists sitting up there working at Hertz in Houston, up here making false calls. It's somebody making a false call deliberately. You understand? Trying to get black people whacked. They understand if a, if they call up and say, "Oh, hey, there's a black person who stole this car," they know the police is gonna come with guns blazing. They know that. You understand? They, they're using the system against us. They know that. My people, please be careful out there in Houston. My people in Houston, please be careful. We can't rock with Hertz right now. If you're in Houston, you can't rock with Hertz right now. You dig? Hurts, they're going to have to holler at us about that so we can fix this. Yeah, this is another form of swatting. This is another form of swatting. So my, my Houston people, see the, the mainstream media, they ain't going to put it out there for you like that. We got to start looking out for each other when these local stories start popping, popping off. We have to know how to let everybody know to be careful out here. That's a very dangerous thing. You understand? Sounds like somebody at Hertz got some kind of law enforcement connection. Because see, these white supremacists, they all, they all work with each other. 
and they've deputized some of these civilians, they all work in conjunction with each other, ladies and gentlemen. They work with each other. That's why they've deputized Kyle Rittenhouse. That's why they're parading him around. There was a cop out here in L.A. He just got called out, a, a, a veteran cop who was selling pro Kyle Rittenhouse shirts. Kyle Rittenhouse was working with police. You got these Gestapo units who are deputizing these Kyle Rittenhouses and all that out here so that when they go out here killing people, the city won't be on the hook. You see, this is the, this is why they're parading them around because they want to telegraph, we need more of you guys to be deputized off the books. We need more of these off the book deputized guys to do the killing for us. So if you get caught, the city won't be on the hook. The governor won't be on the hook. The police unions won't be on the hook. You understand? That's why they're making such a big deal about making Kyle Rittenhouse a big hero. That's why law enforcement, they're all embracing him. And that judge, that judge knew what was up. That judge knew what this was about. So we have to understand how the game is played out here. We have to know how this thing works. And we have to know when these folks get Negroes out here too to do the dirty work for them. There was a video going around with this dude who does pranks, one of these unfunny non-FBA niggas who hang around a lot of white people who do these goofy pranks. And he did these pranks where he was walking in like a Walmart, a Safeway store, just randomly touching white women and all of this crazy shit. He does all of these real unfunny skits. It's this unfunny non-FBA troll. I think he's originally from Canada. So he's clearly non-FBA. So this dude, hold on, let me show a video that, that went viral. And boy, the white supremacist was like, oh man, man, if that was me, he would have got shot and all of this stuff. Hold on, let me show this video of this dude right here. This dude's name is Trey something. But look at this video. All right, and the white supremacists are having a field day with this. Hold on. Hi. Hi, why are you touching me? Because you smell so good. Okay, uh, no thank you. Can I maybe smell you? I see that you're doing some sort of weird psychology experiment, but if you put your hands on me again, I will call the fucking police. Get away from you me. You smell like a beautiful vanilla candle. Help! Wait! Don't do that. <laughs> Help! I'm being attacked! Oh my god, this is, this is gold, by the way. Keep going, keep going. Say say he's black, say he's black. Don't you have security in this store? I went to get chicken nuggets, ma'am. You were next to the chicken nuggets, and I went like that on the side. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Now... We're going to get on the rape thing in a minute. You notice the first thing, now look, the dude's an idiot, but the first thing out of her mouth was rape. First thing out of her mouth was rape. All right. First thing out of her mouth was rape. One of these weird dudes. Okay. Don't get, don't, don't miss that. Hope you don't miss that. But the first thing she yelled was rape. <laughs> okay. Well, let me play the red. Let me play that again. Okay, that's the first thing out of her mouth. They said she got right on the code and went right to rape. Okay. Oh, my pussy is in there. Oh, so somebody's trying to get my white pussy. Okay. All right, lady. All right. Hold on. Hold on. I will call the fucking police. Get away from you me. You smell like a beautiful vanilla candle. Help! Wait! Don't do that. <laughs> Help! I'm being attacked! Oh my God, this is, this is gold, by the way. Keep going, keep going. Say, say he's black, say he's black. Don't you have security in this store? I went to get chicken nuggets, ma'am. You were next to the chicken nuggets and I went like that on the side. I didn't even touch you. So he grabbed my body. What body? <laughs> I was just walking in the park and I saw, I saw your granddaughter. She's just so beautiful. I was wondering, can I maybe have her hand in marriage? <laughs> Stop it. Hey, Excuse me, don't how are you that. doing? Excuse me? Okay. Okay, so this guy does these goofy, unfunny videos. Okay. He does these very, very goofy. He's this Canadian coon. He hangs around a lot of white boys. It's, it's not funny. It's just real lame. And let me tell you something. 
when these dudes do videos like this and it gets spread on these white supremacist websites, because here's the thing. The white supremacist websites, see, they use this as justification to try to do harm to all black folks. See, man, if I had a gun, see, this is why we need to open carry. This is why we need concealed carry. You, you see? Which leads me to believe, because this guy, has, he's do, he does a bunch of these videos. Hold on. Let me show y'all something else about this guy. This guy does a bunch of videos like this. Hold on. Hold on one second. Now, what's this guy's name? I forgot what this coon's name is. Now, what's the guy's name? What's his name, guys? Somebody in the room help me out. What's this guy's name? I forgot this nigga. It's Trey Collins or something. What's this guy's name? Help me in the chat room. He's a Canadian coon. What's his name? Somebody help me with his name real quickly because I forgot his name. I had his name earlier, but I forgot the dude's name. Hold on. Uh, hold on. I think, I think it's Trey Collins. Hold on. Hold on. Is that it? Damn it. Hold on. I know he's the corny nigga, but hold on. Because he said he has one video where he was talking about how come he don't get arrested and. Oh, man. Somebody said Joloff Collins. But yeah, he has one video where he was talking. He was bragging about how he doesn't get arrested. I want to find that part. Trayvon Little, that's his name? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, no, that's not his name. Oh, I want to say Trey, I forgot what the guy's name is and nobody in the room knows the dude's name. Um, I wanted to find the video where he was talking about he was bragging about how he doesn't get arrested. That's what I wanted to find, but I forgot this goofy nigga's name. But listen, this dude does a lot of these videos like that. He was like, yeah, I don't get arrested. Whoop -whoop. But now he's out here doing this type of stuff. He's out here doing it. So who's putting this nigga up to doing this unfunny shit? They don't, yeah, nobody really knows him, but he's doing this stuff. And again... You got to watch this stuff. This stuff gets passed around. You get this goofy non-FBA tether who don't nobody know. He goes out here and does this goofy nonsense that law enforcement probably got this guy doing, doing these pranks. It's nothing for them to pay these people to do this. I want y'all to understand, a lot of the stuff you see where these people are doing all of this stupid shit and they're doing it over and over again, and they never see... Yeah, Trey Sellers, that, that's his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trey Sellers, that's his name. Yeah, that's this guy's name. All right, hold on. I think that's his name. Okay, I'm trying to find... Hold on, let me double check. Hold on. Yeah, that's his name, Trey Sellers. What's his um? Hold on, I don't know. Da, 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 da. Hold on, I'm looking at his page. I'm trying to find some stuff. Okay, um, I'm looking up some stuff on this guy, Trayvon Sellers. Hold on, because I want to see. Yeah, he has a Twitter page. He does all this unfunny shit. And he was bragging about not being arrested. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he was snapping on some people at Taco Bell one time. Hold on. Da, da, da. One of these clout chasing niggas. I'm trying to find the shit where he was talking about he won't get arrested. Okay, fuck it. Okay. I can't find it right now. I can't find it right now. But listen, it's nothing for the police to get one of these dudes. Have them go out here to do these pranks. Put it all on YouTube. Put it all on social media. And they never arrest these dudes. They never arrest them. 
they know who these guys are, but they never get arrested. They go in these stores vandalizing stuff, and they never get arrested. One month ago was the arrested video. Okay. So the guy, he does these videos, and they spread these on all of these law enforcement websites and all of these white supremacist websites. And that's being used to say, hey, this is why if you see a black person run up on you, you're going to have to shoot them. You see? Hey, if you see a black person, if they run it up and they're touching you. Hey, man, you're justified in shooting them because this one nigga who was doing it, this guy, they're playing the knockout game. They're playing the touching game. They're playing the rape game. You see? And they know how to get these non-FBA niggas because we know the ramifications of that. As Foundation of Black Americans, we know the ramifications of that. We're not about to go run and touching on people. We're not doing that. We ain't about to do that. We're not going to do that. But they get these tethers to do that. They get these tethers to do that all day. And they know these tethers are running with these white boys. So they let them guys do that. And we get the backlash. So while this nigga's out here doing these goofy pranks, he goes back to, to Canada where he's safe or wherever. And then we got to get the ramifications. I want y'all to understand. Y'all don't take that lightly because they did the same thing right before the Michael Brown situation, before they killed Michael Brown. I was warning people about the knockout game propaganda. I would do videos over and over again. I told people, hey, the white media, they're running with a fake narrative about a knockout game. White media outlets around the country, they were in unison saying that black people are going around knocking out white people, playing the knockout game. And they kept showing doctored clips that were unrelated and they were attributing all of these unrelated videos. Some of these videos were even shot in Europe. But all of these videos where black people were randomly assaulting white folks, they, they centralized it and said that black people got together and decided on playing a game that we're doing nationwide, which was complete propaganda, but it worked because right after they did that propaganda, and I kept warning people, I said, family, something big is coming up. Family, y'all keep your eyes open. They're doing this for a reason. Right after they did that, they killed Michael Brown. They killed Mike Brown. And they used knockout game propaganda. Remember, with Mike Brown, people forget the lie they told about Mike Brown. They said Mike Brown tried to knock the cop out. That was the lie about Mike Brown. And the cop, they said that, that Darren Wilson had all of these bruises. He had no scratches on his face or anything. They lied. They lied all the way from top to bottom with that case. They lied and said that... Mike Brown was trying to knock out the white cop, which was absolutely not true. They used all types of I'm white and I say so narratives. This is why when we see propaganda in unison, we have to start calling that out. We have to start calling that out, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So when we see stuff like this, we got our, our, our antennas have to go up. We got to be on alert when we see these non-FBA niggas going around here doing these dangerous pranks, touching on people and all of that goofy nonsense. Because, you know, they treat us like one big nigga. Yeah? So we got to watch out for that stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And we got to be codified. And when I mean codified, I'm talking about codified for the black people. Because, man, we ain't got time for all of this kumbaya we are the world nonsense. And speaking and going back to the theme of today's broadcast, talking about the Divestor Blues and some of these non-FBA people, did y'all see this? This right here. This woman here went to a comedy show with Gary Owens and gave him a shirt. Gary, can I be your next black girl? This is what we're doing out here. This is what's going on. Family, the divestors are embarrassing themselves. There's just no pride and no dignity with the divestors, ladies and gentlemen. This type of stuff that they're doing, this is shameful. This is shameful behavior. 
Family, this lady right here, I smell Joloff. I smell oxtails, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, family, I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck. I, I'm going to keep it a buck. I smell oxtails. I smell Joloff. When we zoom in, we just start taking a good look at her. Family, I that 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 lost look, that lost bedwinch look. Family, I smell oxtails. And what really, family, these ashy ass ankles with the tight shoes and this bad built Buick shaped body, family, it's giving me flakes. I'm getting ashy vibes. I'm getting volcanic ankles. Them ankles are fairly ashy, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think this is an FBA. Somebody said, Jimmy, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm smelling some, some bammy bread. I'm getting a Jamaican vibe from this woman with these ashy fucking hooves. Come on, them hooves, them ashy hooves stuck in them damn Walmart heels. Come on, FBA women usually go out the house. They're going to lotion them ankles down a little bit. Yeah, that, that look like she's big built with no ass and ashy ankles. Come on. I'm, I'm smelling some, some salt fish. Okay. <laughs> I'm smelling salt. I'm smelling Aki. <laughs> And Bammy bread, <laughs> them, them ham hock legs and no ass. That, I, that I'm not getting FBA energy off that, and, and and no dignity. You ain't got no dignity going up here doing this shit. All right, this is just you left your dignity at the border doing this. You left your dignity and your lotion. All right, you left the dignity here and the lotion there. You left the dignity and the lotion. Lord. With them fucking ashy ass ankles. No, this ain't one of ours, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I can't claim that. That's not one of ours. The FBA women know how to lotion it down when they leave the house. You don't really see too many FBA women ashy like that. All right? You're going to hit them ankles before you leave the house. You're not going to walk out with your, your ankles that flaky and crusty. All right. See, a lot of these non-FBA women, they be wanting to save a few dollars. Uh, Bumba Clyde, I don't need, me don't need no lotion. Me don't need no lotion. I got money for other, other things. I got money for other things than lotion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, y'all be trying to cut corners. Y'all non-FBA, y'all trying to get other things with the money. Uh, I don't want to get lotion. Bumper clot. <laughs> the sisters are going to be like, nah, I'm going to get me some cocoa butter. I'm getting some cocoa butter for my damn ankles. Yeah, a lot of y'all non-FBA women, you need the lotion. The, the, the money for the lotion can be used for other things. I can get more bundles for me braids. Oh, y'all don't want to, y'all trying to cut corners. Yeah, y'all be cutting corners. Y'all like, I have, the non-FBA women, y'all be holding on to money a little bit too hard. Y'all hold on to the money, so y'all be negotiating. If I, if I get, uh, if I get breads, I want to get lotion. If I get two more bundles, I can't get me lotion. If I get me lotion, I will not have the edges. So you had to make a choice, either lotion legs or no edges. Edges, no lotion. So you got to negotiate. So she clearly chose edges. She needed edges more than lotion. Oh, y'all be negotiating. That's why we can tell those non-FBA foreheads and hairlines. See, y'all, y'all... Y'all hold on to money real tight. Y'all 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 have a scarcity mentality a lot of times. So money, boy, you got to hold on to that shit. You know, you got to do without one or do without the other. 
That's why these these kids see what happens. Y'all be having these non FBA air hairlines, FBA hairlines. We can tell you got a non FBA hairline. We can tell because your shit is pushed back and you hella young. When you're real young and your hairline is fucked up, because what happens is your family, when you were a kid, they wanted to save money. They didn't want to go pay the $10 to get you a damn haircut. So they wanted to do it themselves. They sat up here. Your dad sat his black ass up here and cut your hair, not knowing what he was doing. He pushed your hairline back. And y'all got to understand, when y'all start fucking around with kids' heads, pushing their hairlines back, you mess their hairlines up. And the shit don't really grow back like it's supposed to. Your dad... Shut up, little nigga. You will not go to the barber shop. I caught it. I caught your shit. And your dad is zipping your shit back. So now you're 23 years old looking like George Jefferson. So they didn't mess your hairline up because they wanted to save $10 a week. No, fuck that nigga. $10 can be used for food. So, you know, they using the $10 to get a gang of ramen noodles. So they sacrifice your hairline to eat. So now your hairline is janky. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, they cutting your hair with a rusty ass razor. They know they didn't they ain't gonna buy a new razor. They, they, they real cheap. Your family's real cheap. Now fuck a new razor. I know it's rusty. It, it does they got that job done. You know, they cutting your shit with a razor and the razor rusty. So now you got gangrene all on your damn hairline. Your hairline is janky as shit. Yeah, Stephen A. Smith, look at his hairline. He's Caribbean. Case in point, look how fucked up Stephen A. Smith's hairline is. He's from the Virgin Islands, all right? Case closed. He's from St. Thomas. <laughs> look at that hairline. Yeah? But, listen. Yeah, Listen, but we got a lot of janky behavior going on out here. Even we got some of our FBA folks on that bullshit. Um, what's that dude? Joe Madison. That's his name. There's a brother named Joe Madison. He's on Sirius. He's one of these Democratic shills. So you got this dude, Joe Madison. You got this dude, Joe Madison. You know, he's all clicked in with the Democrats. And what I, I don't like, what I don't like. I don't like these dudes, the, 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 that John Lewis clique, these John Lewis types, these folks who sit up here and do all types of stunts for other groups. So right now, Joe Madison, he's going on a hunger strike. Joe Madison has been out here going on a hunger, hunger strike for voting rights and the voting rights is really for non-immigrants i mean non non non-citizens it's for these immigrant groups the voting rights they're fighting for is for these non-citizens can who can vote who can get the right to vote which is what's happening in new york so you get these negroes out here these these boule congressional black caucus negroes this is him I've lost over 20 pounds on my hunger strike for voting rights. Starting today, I intend to take a photo every week until I can while I continue to sacrifice my body for democracy. Starving for voting rights. Protect the vote. Voting rights now. So understand, these niggas don't do none of this. They ain't starving themselves for reparations for black people. Okay? They're not starving for reparations. They're not sacrificing their bodies for black people at all. Joe, uh, John Lewis would do all of these theatrics for Hispanic groups and the LGBT. He would have chained himself to the floor. Remember when the club, the gay, the gay nightclub got shot up? They're sitting on the floor having a sit-in for gay rights. Oh, they're, I'm willing to get beat. So that they can open their pussy like we open up Selma, you know. So he's willing to get beat up for all of these other groups. All of these boule, bootlick Negroes for Hispanics, for the white LGBT. Boy, they'll sacrifice their body and everything. They won't sacrifice a damn thing for us. 
He, somebody said he's starving for stupidity. But he's taking pictures of himself starving. Let me show y'all the picture he put up. Hold on. Let me show y'all. This is the picture that Joe Madison put up. This is Joe Madison. He's going to take a picture and post it every day. This is Joe Madison showing off his little starving body. Hold on. This is Joe. Hold on. That's Joe looking like a moist sugar daddy. This nigga look like he's thirst trapping for Jesse Smollett. Nigga, you doing the most, brother. Brother, you look like you about to give conjugal visits to a mafia member. Nigga, if you don't stop, there's no honor in this, Joe. We ain't co-signing this, Joe. You looking like you updating your Christian Mingle profile. You thirst trapping, brother. This nigga's thirst trapping. Old ass, hungry little old body. Put your clothes back on, nigga. Do all, if you're going to do all this, do it for some black folks. Do it for some black rights, nigga. You out here campaigning for bussy, look like, man. You, this look like you in the same hotel that Andrew Gillum was in. Looks like the same sheets. I'm checking for bussy stains on that sheet, Joe. Now, you too old to be doing all this, Joe. That's too much. Starving for votes, nigga. You starving for Bucci Cat. This is moist, my nigga. Looking like a leather tote bag. <laughs> this nigga stomach look like he didn't had a C-section. This nigga has a hood rat stomach. Hood rats who be having a gang of kids stomach look like this. Put your goddamn clothes on, Joe. Come on, nigga. You out here thirsting, thirst trapping. For some boy Gina, my nigga. This ain't it, bruh. Why all these boule congressional black caucus niggas always got their clothes off? Him rolling, they always got their clothes off or booty tooted up somewhere. Come on, nigga. This is supposed to be our black representation. You see, representation don't matter. Policies matter. I don't want niggas like this representing me. I don't want niggas like this representing me at all. This is pathetic. This is pathetic as hell. Look, just one more time. Look at this nigga. This nigga look like he about to go get an abortion. Just looking pathetic. <laughs> bussy gang, bussy gang. <laughs> Come on, Joe, and all of y'all Democratic shields. Y'all doing the most. See, that's why I don't go for that representation matter stuff. It doesn't matter. What matters is people putting together policies for foundational black Americans. You see? And when it comes to us, when it comes to us, we always got to be lumped in with all of these other groups. See, I ain't doing that. I ain't trying to be lumped in with all these other groups. I'm not trying to be lumped in with other groups. We're going to have to start saying as foundational black Americans, we're going to have to get policies specifically for us. We got to get policies specifically for our needs. Our so-called representation, boy, they don't put it on the line for us. When it comes to other groups, they'll make a damn fool of themselves. You understand? So yeah, representation doesn't matter if there's no policies that's going to represent us. A lot of folks in here, hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button. But yeah, when they start talking about, well, we're not going to give you black folks nothing. When we say, hey, we need tangibles. Okay, look, what we'll do instead of tangibles, we're going to give you representation. So what we'll do we're going to hire a lot of black people. So that's going to be your reparations. And these are the niggas they hire. All right? They're going to hire. This is supposed to be our representation. Bussy Wonderland. You dig? Hold on. Hey. Yeah. Bussy Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Bussy Wonderland. All right.
is Bussy Wonderland. I don't want Bussy Wonderland with these niggas. This is Bussy. Fuck Bussy Wonderland. We need some tangibles. Don't take us to Bussy Wonderland. That's what they want to give us. Instead of giving us some, we got to take some, they got to send niggas to Bussy Wonderland and we got to sit up here and act like that's some kind of benefit for us. I don't want you to, sending niggas to Bussy Wonderland don't do nothing for me. I don't give a shit about Bussy Wonderland. You sending all these niggas to Bussy Wonderland. I don't care. We need tangibles, dude. Hell, a one-way trip to Bussy Wonderland don't help nobody. <laughs> anyway, let me get out of here. I'm, I'm on one tonight. But listen, y'all, that's been today's episode <laughs> of Tariq Radio. Yo, go to Amazon. Get the new book, ladies and gentlemen. Foundation of Black American Race Beta. That's the book right here. Great book. This is the best book about racism and handling racism that you will read. Ladies and gentlemen, go to um, Amazon right now, ladies and gentlemen, to get this book. Man, you guys, I want y'all to have a phenomenal week, a prosperous week, a blessed week, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys get many, many tangibles. I hope you get economic prosperity. I'm wishing you all good tid tidings and blessings. The holidays are coming up. So I hope you guys are having a great time with your family for the holidays. Um, get your family some great gifts. Get this book as a great gift for your family. If you want to give somebody a good holiday gift, go to Amazon and get this right here. It will arrive just in time for Kwanzaa. Family, this no better gift than this for Kwanzaa and the rest of the holidays that you celebrate. Feliz Navidad, um, Christmas, um, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. This will be a great stocking stuffer, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, by the way, guys, I got a new NFT coming. We have a buck-breaking artwork NFT coming. We got buck-breaking art coming based on the film Buck-Breaking. We're going to have them as NFTs. That's a limited edition NFTs that will be on sale this week. So y'all need to follow me on Twitter at Tariq Nasheed. Follow me on Instagram at Tariq Elite so you guys can get in on those buck-breaking NFTs that we have. You need to get in on that, ladies and gentlemen. Own a piece of the history that we have talking about bug breaking. Anyway, y'all, y'all have a great week, man. Much respect to you guys.